the word church, uh, the church really began. The church founded by Jesus really began way before uh, Jesus was born. And you know who he was. He's the word made flesh. He began with a man named Abraham. Uh, we call him our father in faith. Uh, Abraham heard God speaking to him and he said to him, leave, leave the land of the wheel and come into a land that I will show you. There, there's the, the church, Abraham, our father in faith. You see the church assembling um, at the bottom of Mount Sinai where God says to uh, Moses, assemble the tribes. And he did. There's, there's the church again, the assembly. Uh, he fed them, as you know, with the manna in the wilderness and, and, uh, and with the 10 words coming down from Sinai. And then you see this um, new assembly, uh, not the 12 tribes this time, but the 12 apostles. Um, the church and of course if you notice the parallel um, he he feeds the church uh, with the word himself the word took flesh uh, and he feeds the church with um, his own body blood soul and divinity you will see all of that in, in John's uh, gospel chapter 6 so Catholic means universal we're everywhere that's it, we're everywhere. Um, and what do Catholics believe? And well, we, we believe, we call it the Apostles' Creed. Uh, this was the first formal creed um, put, put before us by the church Jesus founded. Um, now, if you wanna know and look it up for yourself, did Jesus actually build the church? Listen to this here, please. Uh, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do people say that I am? Jesus is asking. And they said, some say uh, you are John the Baptist, others Elijah, um, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say that I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up, you are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. So the father revealed to Peter who Jesus was. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock, the rock being Christ, on this rock, I will build my church. The next assembly, the first assembly, formerly one of the 12 tribes at the bottom of Sinai, the second assembly, the 12 apostles, uh, built on the rock that is Jesus. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock, the rock of Peter's faith, I will build my church and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loose in heaven. Then he gave the disciples strict orders not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. So, the second assembly, the church. And John makes reference to it in his gospel later on, um, where uh, Jesus is speaking to his father. And he says, as you sent me into the world, okay, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So the father sent Jesus into the world. I have sent them into the world, the 12, his church, for their sake, I consecrate myself so that they too may be consecrated in truth. I pray not only for these, the twelve, but for those also who through their words will believe in me. 
the apostolic assembly. May they all be one, Father. May they all be one in us, as you are in me, and I am in you. So that the world may believe it was you who sent me. I've given them the glory you gave to me, that they may be one as we are one, with me in them and you in me. May they be so completely one that the world may realize it was you who sent me. So um, uh, we should be praying, all of us, for, for the unification uh, of the church. There came a great split in the church in the 1500s with thousands of denominations, all of them using private interpretation of the scripture. But no scripture passage, you know, is the subject of private interpretation. The passage, the scripture was given to us by the Holy Spirit. So anyway, what do Catholics believe? This is the Apostles' Creed. Now, the apostles themselves that I know, I, that I know of didn't write this down the way we have it. But it's all based on the teaching of the 12 apostles. And you'll find that there's 12 articles in it, which is kind of lovely. So here it goes. I believe in God. This is what the church believes. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of the heavens and the earth, the Father, the I am who spoke to Moses, the creator of heaven and earth. That's, that's what the church believes, the Father. He saw us being put together in our mother's womb. He sees us now. Every hair on our head is numbered. I believe in the Father Almighty. He created the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, the stars, the balance. And I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. Now hell here is not the hell of the damned. There is no return from the hell of the damned. This was the hell of the dead. In the Old Testament, they called it Sheol, a shadowy underworld. All the people who had died before the time of Christ and heaven somehow or other was not opened until Christ came. And he went to get them and bring them to heaven. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, there's no right hand or left hand of the Father, but we have the limitations of language. Um, like, you remember the passage in the scripture where the sons of the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached and said, Grant that my sons, James and John, will sit on my right hand, sit on your right hand, and one on your left when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied and said to them, The position on my right hand. And my left hand is not mine to give it belongs to the father whom he gives it to but but there's this extraordinary line in the book of revelations which says that um to ever who is to him who is victorious i will grant to sit on my throne as i myself was victorious and sit with my father on his throne directly in heaven there's no um there's no right or left. You know, uh, all of us will be one in God and reign with God for all eternity. So if he will come again to judge the living and the dead. The, the, there are three judgments. Uh, there's the particular judgment. I die today. I go before the judgment seat of Christ. The Father has handed all judgment over to the Son. Jesus judges me, uh, the particular judgment, we call it. Um, the general judgment. The general judgment has nothing much to do with the church. It's the general judgment of the nations. All the nations will be assembled in front of Christ 
when he comes again in glory soon. All the nations who are at this moment buried in the dust of the earth will rise and be assembled in front of Christ, the judge. Um, there's, um, and there's no, it's not, nothing to do with, with baptism or, or Christians. This is the judgment of the nations. The Hindus, the Buddhists, the pagans, the people from Manhattan who don't know Jesus, from Dublin, Ireland. And they're all judged on works of charity. Uh, Jesus will come and he will separate them into two groups. As the shepherd separates sheep from goats, light from darkness. And to those on his right, he will say, come blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, come into the kingdom. Now they're not, they don't believe. So what is this? He tells them why. He said, enter the kingdom because, because I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was sick and you comforted me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And they will all say to Jesus, when, when, when we didn't even know you, when did we do this for you? And he said, as long as you did it to the least of the brothers, you did it to me. Isn't it incredible, please, if you think about it long enough, that you and I today uh, pick up an addict off the street who's on the point of death and we look after him and nurse him back to health. On the day of judgment, we'll be told, that was me, the Christ. So, um, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life of our last ring. The Spirit of God is mentioned in Genesis chapter 1. The Father creates uh, the Word, you know, the Word made flesh. Christ is mentioned. And the Spirit moved over the darkness. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that changed, you know, um, the darkness to light comes down upon the bread and wine at Mass and changes it into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. The Holy Catholic Church, we're holy because Christ is holy. And we're all over the world. We're universal. Here comes everybody. And we are for everybody as well. We want all men to be led to heaven. The communion of saints, the blessed in heaven, the faithful on earth, the people of God. This is the communion of saints. And those, those souls who are being purged, as you know, nothing unclean can enter into heaven. So, uh, that's what we mean by purgatory. We're being purged of our sinfulness. And as far as I can tell, purgatory is exquisite joy because the soul knows that it's saved. And so whatever blockages are in the soul when it dies that prevents it from seeing the glory of God are removed. And I don't know whether there's time or not involved in purgatory. I just know that there is a purgatory, there is a purging, there is a cleansing. Like even Jesus mentioned it when he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. My father cuts back every fertile branch. Purgatory begins in this world. And we believe in the resurrection of the body in the last day and life everlasting, amen. So the Apostles' Creed then was the teaching of the Apostles put into 12 statements. Amen.